What's the word, y'all? I'm about to do something that most YouTubers would tell me not to do. And let's talk about the Minnesota Timberwolves. And I don't mean that as in like, man, other YouTubers hate the Wolves, but it's like when it comes to the YouTube algorithm, they're one of those teams that when you talk about them, the numbers are less. But the, I'm not in this for the numbers right now. I'm in this for the love of the game. And right now, I'm loving the Minnesota Timberwolves. Yesterday, they played against the Boston Celtics, and I said on the Kenny Beach and Podcast, link is in the description, that this was going to be the game of the day because A, the Boston Celtics are completely undefeated going into it, and the Minnesota Timberwolves have not lost a game at home, and they've been looking pretty good recently. So this is going to be a battle and it was and went to overtime and the Edwards ended up taking over and the Minnesota Timberwolves end up beating the Boston Celtics the Celtics are five and one the Denver Nuggets are seven and one and what do those teams have in common? Their one loss is both to the Minnesota Timberwolves, y'all. So I got to react and slash overreact to the Wolves. I made a video this offseason about how they were one of the most intriguing teams of basketball. And I gave you the blueprint to why I believe the Minnesota Timberwolves should be better this season. Part of it was continuity, right? We had to figure out what was going on with Rudy Gobert and Carl Anthony Towns. Can they coexist? Part of it was health. And part of it was buy-in from everybody involved. And as of right now... Those three pillars of things for success are all lit up, I guess. What, what do pillars do? They're looking good in all fronts. Now, when I, when I talk about overreacting, it's part of our job as NBA fans to look at the numbers slash the games that we're presented with, especially this early in the season, and try to figure out what's sustainable and what isn't. For example, right now, the Sacramento Kings are the 26th ranked offense in basketball. If I was taking this at face value, I would say, oh, the Kings are not a good offensive team. But you have to count for the fact of De'Aaron Fox missing a couple games. And that is all you really need to know. So these numbers aren't real. So it's about what numbers are real versus what numbers aren't. And this, the Minnesota Timberwolves being the best defensive team in ball by three points, feels real. Now, I don't know if they're going to end game 82 with the number one offense. But as far as them being a high-level offense, top five, I'm sorry, defense, top-level defense, that seems to be pretty real. And I think... Part of that has to do with the buy-in from everybody everybody involved. Rudy Gobert is always going to be a good defender. It just has been his, his whole brand, and that's the reason why he gets paid so much money because of the defensive side. Carthony Towns is not known as a defensive player. Though we're going to talk about Carthony Towns and his woes and everything, I think he's bought into the defensive side of the ball. Anthony Edwards told us last year that he wanted to make an all-defensive team. He, ended up, he didn't end up doing that, but you can tell from the early parts of the season that that's one of his goals. And then J.D. McDaniels was snuffed from the all-defensive team last year. So they have the players that will be good defenders. And now, again, going on the, the sample size that we have, them being relatively healthy, and that's what J.D. McDaniels missed in the first couple games of the season, the defense is like that. The Boston Celtics went into last night's game averaging like 128 points per game. The game went into overtime, and they ended up only scoring 109. That's what extra minutes accounted for. That is elite level defense. Last night, they scored 99.1 points per 100 possession, which is the lowest output of the Boston Celtics this entire year. They got a pretty good amount of rim pressure in this game, but didn't shoot the ball very effectively. And part of that is Rudy D. Gobert. Because he's a One Piece fan. Uh, if you check his bio. And part of that is the other bigs as well. Carl Anthony Towns, Nas Reed. But we have to talk about Anthony Edwards. Because most of us agree that Anthony Edwards is a star and he's just breaking out. You know what I'm saying? Last year was a good year, his first all-star appearance. If you look at all of the projections as far as ESPN's projection, uh, Bleach Report's projection, majority of people that have in tune with the game are saying that this is going to be the Anthony Edwards breakout season where he's widely renowned as a top 15 player in the league. And we're starting to see that. The game that we saw last night of him hitting three back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back shots in the clutch is an example of that. But th there's a couple different things that we desperately need to talk about when it comes to Anthony Edwards right now. This is one of my favorite possessions of the entire season so far. Uh, the Minnesota Timbers are down by two in overtime. This is Jason Tatum. If you didn't know, he is an MVP candidate right now. He is killing the game. And again, the boss is so, so undefeated. Uh, Anthony Edwards at this point in time has five fouls. And he said, I want to guard Jason Tatum. This is what five fouls, the aggression. Now, you can look at it and say, hey, maybe it wasn't the smartest thing <laughs> considering you have five fouls and you might have uh, uh, tore that man up and, and might have been called for a foul. But that is what you, you want in your star player. What about this level of effort from him? Hold on. Give me that. Mike Conley, three-pointer. Bang. That's all created off of Anthony Edwards. Next, he's just Al Horford on the island. He said, hold up. Pull up, jump shot. Bang. And shout out to, to Rob Perez. This is his video um, of he stitched it all together. 
but it, it, it wasn't in and there. Two minutes left. This is the very next possession. Pull up three early in the clock. Did not matter. These are the clutch shots you're seeing from Anthony Edwards. He's loving it. They're loving it. And as a, as a, a neutral NBA fan, I'm loving it as well. Timeout is called. He comes out of the timeout. There's a screen from Kyle Anderson. He gets to switch on to Chris Asperzingas. They're bringing more people. Guess what? I do not care. <laughs> I do not care. That's a star. That's a star. And, and one of the things that, in my mind, differentiates uh, a star versus a very good player is being able to create something out of nothing. And Anthony Edwards is one of the kings in the league when it comes to that. If you want to see a disgusting offensive possession that ends in the bucket for Anthony Edwards, well, here you go. Anthony Edwards gets the ball, trailing him is, is Jalen Brown. Look at the spacing here. He dribbles, and literally dribbles into Carl Anthony Towns on this play. And guess what? Didn't matter. Rise above everybody high off the glass. I'm just realizing this light. Is that bothering y'all? Oh, man. You got to deal with it. I, 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 I got to get this video on. Now, the elephant in the room when you talk about the Minnesota Timberwolves is Carl Anthony Towns. Yesterday, he had 7.7 7 turnovers, 6 fouls. Uh, Supermax player. So, it's like he hasn't been able to find his footing just yet. And, again, they're 4-2. and two. I don't want to act like they're 22-5 and five or something. But they're 4-2. and two, And Carl Anthony Towns has not found his footing as an individual player. But it's not hindering the success of the team. Here are the on-off numbers for Rudy Gobert and Carl Anthony Towns. So when they're on the court together, they are a net rating of 8.39. Last year, this was a little bit above one. So they're significantly better this year than last year when they're both playing together. And now the split minutes look good too. With Rudy Gobert on the floor, no Carl Anthony Towns to plus 10. With Carl Anthony Towns on the floor, no Rudy Gobert to plus 10. When they're both off, it is a minus 8.11. Last year was when Rudy was on the floor by himself and no Carl Anthony Towns. The defense was elite. The offense was the worst in the league. When Carl Anthony Towns was on the court by himself with no Rudy Gobert, the offense was great and the defense wasn't good. But now you're seeing a balance where one of them can coexist at a time and you're not losing any value. Okay, well, that's not necessarily true. But they're both maintaining. When I say that, they're definitely losing some value or like with no Carl Anthony Towns or just Rudy, the offense is going to be worse objectively, but the defense is so much better that it balances itself out. When Carl Anthony Towns is on the court and Rudy Gobert, the defense will be worse but the offense is so much better. So it's not like it's tanking one way or another because they can maintain on the part that they're struggling at. And when they're together, the fact that this is an 8.39 is an amazing thing if you're a Minnesota Timberwolves fan. We're going to always look at the Rudy Gobert trade as that, right? Walker Kessler, uh, Jared Vanderbilt, what, all of the pieces plus all of the cap. And be like, man, Rudy Gobert is not worth that. And listen, even now I'm saying that as a Rudy Gobert fan, that that was an overpay but if these guys can coexist now and anthony edwards is turning into the star we know he can be you look at those things you're not feeling too bad about it maybe i don't know i, I can't speak for minnesota Timberwolves fans but um that's how i would feel if i was a fan of the team in the moment now you might feel it in three years when maybe rudy's not as good as he is now or vice versa but the conversation has been over the last couple weeks is like okay uh, Carthen Towns, who are we trading him to? You know, who is he getting traded to? He's not fitting right now, boom, boom, boom. He's struggling, whatever. The numbers are saying, yes, he is individually struggling, but he is good enough to at least become of a, a threat where they're still good. To play devil's advocate, you could say, well, if you replace him with somebody that may be playing a little bit better, then maybe the numbers are better. I don't know. But I can't talk about the Minnesota Timberwolves without mentioning Anaj Reed, who is maybe the front runner for, for six man of the year. There's not a shot that he don't like. And guess what? He's hitting all of them. The connection between Cal Anderson and Rudy Gobert is really good, especially after the scuffle that they had last year. So things are clicking right now. And I just wonder how long they can maintain this because we've seen stretches of time last year where they go on a nice little run and be like, oh my God, and they come and, they come. and then they just don't. Or they will have a game where they're up by 20 points like earlier in the season versus the Atlanta Hawks and they'll fumble the game completely. So I'm, I'm not saying that this is a contending team right now, but I, I'm just saying if you're not watching Timberwolves games, you're missing out on some really, really good defense and a superstar player, a guy that's playing to a superstar caliber and Anthony Edwards, and you should be tuned in a little bit more. You let me know, how good could the Timberwolves be? Are, are they good enough to stay outside of the play-in do you trust them that much or is this too small of a sample size for you let me know uh, go watch or listen to the kenny beach and podcast linked in the description